So it says in an oscillating LC circuit, le let me draw the circuit diagram so that I have some clear picture of what it's talking about. So LC circuit um, in the very simplest sense, it basically has two things, L, the inductor, and C, the capacitor, and that's it. Technically, you would need something to initially charge this up or something, but you know, make things simple. Just assume that something has initially charged this up. And what you have to just deal with it now is um, behavior of the circuit after it's been charged up. Uh, it says the maximum, it's giving me the maximum charge on the capacitor. Uh, let me label that Q naught. So at some time, um, so let me say at some time uh, t equals zero, I have the that maximum charge plus q naught, and my you know this is how capacitors charge up plus and minus minus. So it, let's say at time equals zero, they are charged up that way, and uh, at the moment when you have maximum charge on the capacitor, you should have current through the circuit that's equal to zero. And there are different ways to get at it, but th that's the condition you should have. And then the question is giving me the maximum current through the inductor. Let me color code this and label this as I naught. And this is gonna be at some different time. So let me say at some time T1, this is a moment in time when you have the maximum current I is equal to I naught flowing through the inductor. And um, yeah, I guess that's just the thing. Well, that's the current flowing through the inductor. And I guess uh, if I had to say something, when you have a maximum current flowing through the inductor, the voltage difference across the inductor, it's gonna be zero because the and when current is maximum, it's not changing, which means the, you know, from the relationship for the inductor, um, the, the voltage difference is, L D I D T, the voltage difference is equal to zero. So, and uh, this also means the charge stored on the capacitor would be zero. So, so that's at uh, another different time. So with that, it's asking, oh, what is the period of oscillations? Did it even? <laughs> um, okay, so I hope it, um, well, not hope. So, you know, it's leaving me a little bit um, lost at the moment because it's told me it's LC circuit. It's told me these parameters, but it hasn't told me oh, what these parameters are. So you might be remembering this formula, omega is equal to one over root LC. And what I'll tell you is that um, um, that's not useful right now. Uh, because I'm not given L or C. So, you know, this and the other formula, you know, frequency is omega over two pi, and the, the period is one over frequency. All of these, not useful. So I'm gonna have to try something else to figure out the frequency of oscillation. So let me do what I would do um, when I feel lost. I, I can write down, start writing down some other things I know about this circuit. So I can write down the um, charge on this capacitor as a function of time. And especially with this time chosen, the charge on the capacitor should be, as a function of time, uh, the maximum charge, Q naught, times cosine of omega t. Or if I want to make the math more simple for myself later, two pi, uh, frequency times T, or if I want to make it even simpler for myself, it's really two pi divided by period times T. And I'm looking for this period. So, all right, um, this is looking a little bit promising because I know what Q naught is. Um, I'm looking for P and when I plug in T equals zero, I get Q naught, but that does, because the term with the peak just cancels out, it doesn't tell me anything. So, but I don't know what this amount of charge is at any other time T other than zero. 
So, all right. Uh, the other information I have is uh, current is given. So, so let me try to get an expression for current. Um, I could write the exact same expression with the I naught, but what I hope you remember by this point is that um, there's a relationship between the current through a capacitor and the amount of charge on the capacitor, which is the current is the QDT. So you say, all right, my current here as a function of time is going to be dq dt, which I can write down based on this. So it should be uh, derivative of the outside. Um, so cosine becomes minus sine times the derivative of the inside. So I have the one factor that comes out, 2 pi over p times q naught. And the derivative of outside is minus the sine of um, 2 pi over p t. And, and this is getting somewhere because um, as I stare at this expression for a while, I recognize that this particular combination must be the amplitude of oscillation for current. So this must be I naught. So I finally have equation I'm looking for, which is um, two pi over P times Q naught is equal to I naught. And this is an equation where there's a single unknown and everything else is known. Q naught and I naught are known. So I do now finally write down um, period P is equal to two pi Q naught divided by I naught. So it's, I, I hope it's an unexpected expression that um, that somehow just from knowing the maximum charge on capacitor and maximum current through inductor that you can figure out the period of oscillation. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's uh, one of the reasons we physicists love oscillatory phenomena uh, because it, there's a lot of things you can figure out about oscillatory phenomena from uh, really disparate uh, pieces of information. So I, you know, I'm gonna say, Oscillate, if you take uh, more physics, like upper division physics, physics 4C, oscillation is one thing that you will see in almost every physics class. You see it in quantum mechanics. You see it in, um, so anyways, I'll leave it there. So, all right, um, it says, okay, so that's the period of oscillation. Um, and for part B, the time between when charge on capacitor is zero, and when it holds the maximum charge is, so I guess I need to figure out what fraction of a period that should be. Uh, I think this is where it's useful to have some figure draw to help me think through this clearly. So I'm gonna just sketch one or slightly over one period of oscillation for Q of T. So, um, so based on this expression here, it looks like a cosine. So it's gonna start out at maximum value Q naught. It, as it oscillates, it's gonna go to zero and reach the, oh, right, right. At some point it's gonna reach the maximum minus Q naught by which I mean these two locations will flip. Um, and then it's gonna discharge again and then come back here. And this is one period. So one period isn't simply going from uh, the maximum amount of charge to another maximum amount of charge. It's, uh, you have to come back to the same sign. So with the way part B is awarded, time between when the charge on capacitor is zero, so either this point or this point, and when it holds maximum charge, I would say both the here and here are related to maximum charge. So it's asking for a quarter of a period. So that's what I should have here. This divided by four, or you know, simplifying some things, it should be pi q naught over two i naught. You know, watch the uh, powers of ten and the prefixes, and make sure you are putting it in uh, milliseconds. So.